A new 450-page document in the Cochrane Reviews comes out saying that low-carb diets are no better than any other diet for weight loss, improving blood sugar, and other cardiometabolic risk factors. So is this true? Should we throw out low-carb diets as being beneficial or more beneficial than any other diet? Or is there maybe a problem with the way this uh, data is evaluated that might lend some more information about what we know about low-carb diets? I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And the interesting thing about this paper is it really can play to your preconceived notions and can play to your biases. If you're biased a little against low-carb diets, you can say, see, boom, proof, low-carb diets are no better, see you later. If you're biased in favor of low-carb diets, you can say this paper is complete junk and has no relevance, throw it all out. I lean more towards the second, but not all the way to the second, because there's still some things that we can take from it. And I think we have to recognize where science is maybe difficult, or not maybe, where science is definitely difficult when it comes to evaluating diets and how that impacts our interpretation. So let's get into some of the details, okay? So first, so their conclusion, I'll read it verbatim here, there is probably little to no difference in weight reduction and changes in cardiovascular risk factors up to two years follow-up when overweight and obese patients without and with type 2 diabetes are randomized to either low-carbohydrate or balanced carbohydrate weight-reducing diets. So some important things just to take from the conclusion. Only randomized studies, so that's a benefit. Up to two years follow-up, but not uh, not all of them had two years follow-up, clearly. Um, the main differences being weight reduction and changes in cardiovascular risk factors. And the people, the subjects, are overweight or obese, either with or without type 2 diabetes. Now, interestingly, when you talk about bias, you know, balanced carbohydrate, weight-reducing diet, balanced carbohydrate, as if anything else would be unbalanced. To me, that's, you know, judgmental, but that's my take on it, right? That's my take that it's a very judgmental term and clearly sets the bias in favor of what I would call a high-carbohydrate diet, but what they call a balanced carbohydrate diet. So words matter, right? But here's the thing. Like so many other studies, this wasn't a low-carb study, right? This had, they did not... Re- focus on truly low carb diets. They defined low carb, two different versions of low carb. A very low carb is less than 50 grams or less than 10% of calories, but low carb is less than 45% of calories and or up to 150 or 200 grams. They defined it differently in different places. Um, And that's what's a little concerning here. Now, they tell you exactly how many studies are in each group. So there were 11 studies that were the very low carb, less than 10%. Of the calories and 31 studies that were not low carb at all, less than 45%. Um, And then five studies started as a low carb and then allowed an increase of carbs as the study went on. So, all told, 11 out of 47 were truly low carb, less than a quarter of the studies. And if you're going to combine them all together and make make a data analysis based on all the studies combined, you're comparing apples and oranges. Forgive the pun, pretty bad. But Um, you see what I get. You're comparing studies that just don't pay, uh, that that don't go together and don't reach the conclusion that you're trying to make about low carb studies. Um, So you could say, you know, carb reduction of any amount when combined all together is no different. Okay. I guess that's a, that's a more accurate statement, but that it's still not helpful because a carb reduction of a 45% carb diet, a 40% 35% may be pretty similar. But when you get down to the 20, 15, 10s, and 5% diets, that's when physiology shifts. That's when the carbs you're eating have to be much higher quality. I mean, from a practical standpoint, if you're only eating 30 or 50 grams of carbohydrates per day, there's no room for donuts and there's no room for even probably rice and bread and pita um, and uh, potato chips and, and and chips and salsa, you know, there's no room for those carbs if you're only eating 30 to 50 grams. If you're eating 200 grams, there sure is plenty of room for those types of carbs. So right away, the degree of carb reduction is going to change the diet pretty significantly. So uh, it's not fair to combine them all together. The other thing is, are they energy balanced diets? So this is sort of a follow-up to a study these same authors um, published in 2014. And there's a lot of criticism about that because they were they only focused on energy balanced diets. And one of the benefits of low-carb eating, studies show time and time again, with low-carb eating, you naturally 
reduce your caloric intake. The average participant will naturally reduce their caloric intake. So even without telling them they have to lower their calories, they do because they're more satiated. And, and that's a big part of how they help with weight loss, but help with weight loss without hunger, without having to white knuckle it and making sure you're getting adequate nutrients. So um, that's a big part of it. So this version of it, they did not only include isoenergetic studies. They didn't only include studies that um, equalized for caloric intake, but the vast majority of studies were prescribed to be calorie reduction in isoenergetic type trials, which is not really kind of real world experience because it takes away that real world benefit of low carb diet. So you don't have to count calories and you normally reduce your, your carb intake. So like I said, if, if your bias is in favor of low carb diets, you, you probably should throw this, this study out because it's not truly assessing low carb diets. But I think it does bring up the broader concept of nutrition research is hard. It's difficult to do analyses like this. It's difficult to please everybody and, and to really hit the one target that people are looking for. So the authors of this paper were looking for any reduction in carbs to say, does any reduction in carbs help? People who are following a very low carb diet don't care about that. People who are following a higher carb diet and want to know if just reducing their carbs a little bit they probably do care about it. So now they know, according to this study with, again, iso mostly isoenergetic studies, that reducing their carbs just a little bit from like 50% to 40% might not make that much of a difference for them if that's the only intervention they make. But will re reducing it down to 10% make a difference? This does not adequately evaluate that. And, you know, the other part is they included studies that start people at a low um, level of carbs and increase it over time. You know, a number of studies design the trial that way because they don't want people to drop out. They want people to stay in the study um, and they think that's going to increase compliance. And that's part of this, you know, this balance. How do you approach low carb diets? Do you say, oh yeah, you can restrict your carbs for a short period of time and then it just gets really hard to maintain long-term. So you probably should increase your carbs. Or do you say, yeah, you could totally lower your carbs. And there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who can maintain a carb reduction at this level for years and years. Um, so you probably can too. Can everybody? No, not everybody likes to, but there are definitely tricks and tools that you can use to help maintain your carbohydrate reduction. Two totally different approaches for the same advice, basically. But clearly that second person, I think, is going to be a little more motivated and a little more likely to stick with the carbohydrate reduction. But we have to be honest, looking at the randomized controlled trials, even those that, even those that try to keep people um, at a stricter carb reduction long-term, compliance is not perfect, right? Compliance with any dietary intervention is poor at two years. Um, if we look at non-randomized trials, they are we can see with Dr. Hallberg and her trials and other trials that um, when they're non-randomized and sort of self-selected to low carb, then two-year or even three-year compliance is in like the 70% range, which is outstanding. Um, so that, that votes for some real-world benefits um, that you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily see in a randomized controlled trial. But for me, as a clinician, what that tells me, if someone is not willing to make a change, if someone's not ready to make a change, if the change isn't right for that person, okay, then it, you know, then it's not the right intervention, right? If somebody really loves their carbs and their bread and is surrounded by it and can't control their environment and just has these intense cravings and isn't willing to eat that much protein or um, or to eat fat, then then that's not the right person. And I wouldn't want to start that person on a real low carb diet. You have to find other ways, maybe slowly increasing the protein, changing the quality of the carbs. That's a better intervention for that person than going to a low carb diet. So the point is it's one tool in the toolkit, right? A low carb diet is one tool in the toolkit. And as a clinician, we have to find the right person to use that tool on. But the key is it has to be in that toolkit. If we're Sweet, sweet, uh, what is it? Sweeping it under the rug. If we're ignoring it and thinking it doesn't work, so don't even look at it, then we are eliminating a huge potential for people who this is the right intervention for. And that's, I think, the biggest message is that, look, low-carb diets work. They work in the right setting. So finding the right setting for them, finding the right person for them, and they're not the only thing that works. Other dietary approaches work as well, but absolutely low-carb diets are effective and should be a clear part of every clinician, whether you're a physician, a nurse practitioner, a physician's assistant, a dietitian, a nutritionist, a coach, a personal trainer, anybody who's giving nutritional advice. 
it's got to be something that you know about and can use in the right setting for the right people because it can work. Studies like this don't help us because they're too broad, involve too many levels of carb reduction, and aren't specific enough for our, our benefit. All right. Hope that was helpful. Um, I know the study has gotten a lot of press and um, it doesn't deserve it, in my opinion. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thank you.